Hi girls and boys and welcome to Art with Miss Davis. Today we are going to look at this really cool artist from the Renaissance period. His name was Paulus Potter and he loved to do cows and horses because that's what he knew best. This was one of the cows on his farm and he was very close to all of his animals. They were like his friends. So he painted over a hundred of these paintings during the Renaissance. He's a Dutch painter. Um, so he was, it looks like he might have been a dairy farmer, right? And I wanted to show you how cool these look, you guys. Check it out. This is what we're going to make. We're going to make cows with texture just by repeating lines. So let's go ahead and look at the learning intentions today, okay? Will you say it with me, please? Today, we are going to learn about the artist Paulus Potter. Today, we are going to learn about the artist Paulus Potter so that I can understand his subject matter and use it for inspiration. So that I can understand his subject matter and use it for inspiration. Girls and boys, what was his subject matter? Did you say cows? You are right. Okay, that's his subject matter. Today I will practice drawing a cow that fills up my paper. Success criteria. I will know that I have it when I've drawn a cow with color pastels and I've put everything back in a slow moving my body across the room way so that I'm gentle with everyone. I will put these back nicely and check the floor to make sure there's no color pastels. Then I will paint it. And the best part of all, my name and teacher are going to be on it first thing. Okay, so let's try that. I know I will have it when I have drawn my cow using line. I know I will have it when I've drawn my cow using line so that I can create texture and a background with chalk. So that I can create texture and a background with chalk? Okay, I will put my name and teacher on it first thing. I will put my name and teacher on it first thing. That's right, girls and boys. Now, you are going to need a couple of things. So let's get started. You're going to need a paper. You are going to need to make a meatball over there, which is a funny word I use to make a little piece of paper that's all clumped up because this is hard to get off your fingers sometimes and you gotta work on it. It won't just wash off over there. Um, so you wanna wet these and squeeze them out at the sink and you'll have this to clean your table. And I find that most people when they're cleaning their table get their hands clean. So that's great, right? All right, so the next thing you wanna do is get your drawing guide. Um, enjoy your drawing guide. Take a look at your drawing guide because it will show you exactly what you need to do. Start with the first part on your drawing, an oval, as you can see, in at the bottom of your page with your oil pastel. Girls and boys, you can get a whole box of these if you want and share them with other people or you can just get one. Now I'm gonna show you how to draw this really quickly and then show you what you do next. You need to think about space first. So the first thing you wanna draw is an oval. Can you say oval? Then you wanna draw two little nostrils, there we go, and a curved line underneath the mouth. Look at that, we've already got a mouth of it, right? Then you wanna do two lines, it looks like a light bulb, but don't fill it all the way to the top because you need room for your ears. And if you mess up, don't worry, you can go over that with paint, or you can even put a piece of paper or something on it, okay? We don't throw things away here because we really need to be careful with our materials. So the next thing you're gonna do is do two curved lines that go out, but make sure you leave a little bit of room for the eyes in there. So maybe that looks like a, what does that look like right there? It looks like a cup, maybe, or a fan, right? The next thing you wanna do is add some football shapes that go all the way to the edge for the eyes, and you wanna to try to keep them on the same level, all right? Whoops, mine's kind of messed up, but that's okay. I'm gonna fill it in. And I like to leave a little bit of, I like to leave a little bit of, uh, go over it again and you won't even see it, but I like to leave a little bit of uh, space there. And then you'll do the eyelashes because cows do have really big eyelashes, guys. All right, the next thing you wanna do is a line for the body that comes down like so, and a line over here that goes off your page. You wanna make two little ears that look like mangoes. Cows actually have really cute ears. You could even do that. They have fuzzy ears, right? And then you wanna do two horns. Check it out. There we go. 
Now, you want to do a horizon line, which is your line that shows the difference between the ground and the sky. And you want to fill this in with texture. And the way you do texture is by doing repeated lines, girls and boys, okay? So check it out. Now, if my name and teacher is on this, I will see this again, girls and boys. But if it's not, I won't. So you need to make sure first thing and put your name on it. Okay, that's looking pretty good, right? All right, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna add some shapes on my cow. All right, here we go. I'm adding some shapes, maybe do a little heart. These are free form shapes, which means they're just really loose, fun shapes from nature. Check it out. It's looking pretty good. Okay, girls and boys. Now, I wanna take my color pastels gently back before I bring my paint over. And then I need to make sure that, well, I need to make sure my name and teacher's on it. So you can either do that on the back. I usually like to put it on the front. Meg Davis, my teacher is, who's my greatest teacher? My students. My students are my best teachers. You guys always come up with so many inventive ways and you surprise me. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take some paint. Oh, I didn't put any texture on the cow, did I? And this is about texture and space, using up the space. Okay, well, I mean, I could add some to him. You can do these little lines like they did on the cow. Oh, you know what I forgot? My zigzag top for the hair at the top. Check it out, awesome. Oop, the light went off. Okay, I guess they don't think I'm in here, but I am. Okay, girls and boys. So after you get to this point, this may be all you have time for. And that's okay because your name and teacher will be in the back. I will ring the bell. You will say hands up, stand up, and then you walk this gently and quietly back to the rack um, and put it in there gently, okay? Wait your turn if there's a line anywhere. Make a line and be very careful with people so that they feel respected around their space and comfortable. Um, if there is time, you can ask me, is there time to paint it? If there is, I'll ask you to go get a half a cup of water. I will ask you to go get some paints, okay? You will return to your table and you will have fun painting this fun potter cow. And then at the end, we will, you'll hear the bell ring, you take it to the rack and we will clean up quickly, efficiently, and very quietly. Please don't spend very much time at the sink. Just dump this really quickly. Make sure that your paintbrush is sticking straight up and it's clean, goes back in there and dump this cup quickly and just stack it. I'm gonna ask one friend to be in charge of the sink. Okay, guys? Anyway, have fun. These are gonna turn out terrific. And um, I can't wait to see what you're gonna do with your potter cow. Okay. Oh, last thing. At the end, here's what I'm gonna be able to say, okay? Here's your success, real success criteria, okay? Can the student describe Potter's subject matter and give several facts about his life? That would be cows. Cows were a subject matter and he was a farmer. That's how he knew that. And that's how the artists usually paint their subject matter. Did the student fill up their space on their paper with the drawing? Did the student do this? Yes. Did the student put their name and teacher on it? Yes. Did the student create textured lines on the cow? Not on this one, I didn't. Well, I did do, well, no, I didn't do any lines on this one. But this one, I did do textured lines on it, right? Okay, did the student do textured lines on the background? Yes, I did. And girls and boys, I gotta tell you, when I was painting this, I had so much fun because anywhere you put down a line with color pastel, it just kind of, it's like wax. It goes right over it and it looks totally awesome, okay? Also, one other thing, I would leave the middle of your cow, like this area right here, I'd leave that white, because that is just gonna pop out. You could do your cow in brown, or what color are your cows? You could do a purple cow if you want to, do whatever you want, but I think leaving the white part white in the middle is what looks super cool, okay? That looks nice. All right, so have fun, and I can't wait to see what you're gonna make today.